Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we'll solve these two problems from Newton's laws of motion from the book SBT. So let's begin with problem number one. So we've been given a pulley mass system that continues till infinity and it consists of infinite number of pulleys and blocks. The strings are given to be light and inextensible and the horizontal surfaces are smooth. So pulley P1 is moved towards the left with an acceleration of A0 and we have to find the acceleration of this block 1. Okay, so let's say the tension in this string is let's say T. So as the pulley is massless, the net force on it must be zero. So as it is getting pulled by a tension of 2T, the tension on this uh, string must be 2T. Okay, so now if we consider this system, uh, which does not include the first pulley and the mass number one, then this is being pulled with a force of T, right? When this system was pulled with a force of 2T, the acceleration produced on this pulley was A0, which means if a exactly similar system is pulled with a tension of T, then the acceleration produced here must be A0 by 2, right? So if you observe this string over here, so I'm gonna chop this uh, string into two lengths like this, okay? And this part of the string represents the upper part and this part represents the lower part, okay? So let's say this end of the string move towards, moves towards the left by a distance of, let's say, x, okay? And let's say this end of the string moves towards the left by an amount of y. Similarly, even this end will move towards the left by a distance y, right? Because if the pulley moves towards the left by an amount of y, this end must move towards the left by y and even this end must move towards the left by an amount of y. And what will be the displacement of this end? If you observe, if this pulley's acceleration is a0 towards the left and this pulley's acceleration is a0 by 2, so if this end move towards the left by y, then this end will move towards the left by an amount of y by 2, right? So now the string's length, so let's say it was L1 initially, and the length of this string is let's say L1 and the length of this string is let's say L2. Now we'll use the constraint that the length of the string must be constant. So we can say L1 plus L2 should be equal to the final length which is L1 plus y minus y by 2 which is the new length of the upper string plus L2 plus y minus x. So from here we'll get 3y by 2 equals x. Okay so now if you differentiate this uh, equation twice d2y upon dt square is simply the acceleration of this pulley, which is A0, right? And this should be equal to the acceleration of the block, which let's say it's A. So from here, A comes out to be 3 by 2 A0. And as it comes out positive, the direction that we assumed, which was towards the left, is correct. So the acceleration of block 1 is 3 by 2 A0 towards the left. Moving on to the next problem, we have a, we have a smooth spherical ball of mass 2 kg and it is resting on two identical blocks A and B. The blocks are moved apart with the same horizontal velocity of 1 meters per second in the opposite direction. Now we have to find the normal force applied by each of the blocks on the sphere at the instant the se when the separation between the blocks is root 2r. Okay. That is question number one. So let's so let's try to solve it. At some general time, let's say this angle over here is theta. So we can say A equals 2R sine theta because these as the situation is symmetric, both these angles are same and this component would be R sine theta. Okay, and by symmetry, we can clearly see the sphere is gonna come down, right? And by symmetry, we can easily say that the sphere's velocity will be in the downward direction. So we can say dA by dt, which is the rate at which this distance increases would be V plus V, which is 2V. And if I substitute the value of A from over here into this derivative, then we get 2R. The derivative of sine theta would be cos theta, but we have to multiply another d theta by dt term. This would be equal to 2V. So from here, we get d theta by dt as 2V divided by R cos theta. So now let's say the velocity of the sphere is let's say some V downwards. So now we need to write the position of the center relative to some fixed origin. So let's say uh, the distance of the center from the from this point on the ground is let's say h. So we can clearly say dh by dt equals minus v. Now let's try to express h in terms of theta. So let's say the side length of this block is let's say some l and if we add r cos theta to l then that would be equal to h. So this would be d by dt of r cos theta plus l and this is equal to minus v. Okay, let's take it as v dash by the way because we already took v as the velocity of the block, right? So now if I differentiate it, uh, this l is a constant so dl by dt is 0 and d by dt of r cos theta is going to be minus r sin theta times d theta by dt and this would be the, this would be equal to minus v dash. Okay, so now we can substitute the value of d theta by dt into this equation and we'll get r sin theta times 2v divided by r cos theta equals v dash. And from here, we'll get V dash as 2V tan theta. Why can't we just, you know, write the normal reaction and equate it to mg? 
Why can't we do this? Because the thing is, as you can see, there is some acceleration of this sphere in the vertical direction, right? Because if you try to differentiate this, dv dash by dt is not zero, which means there is some acceleration of the sphere. So therefore we cannot like uh, balance the forces. So we, we cannot write 2n cos theta equals mg, which would be wrong. So let's try to find the acceleration. So acceleration is simply going to be dv dash by dt. So that would be 2v, v is a constant, right? Tan theta's derivative is going to be sec squared theta multiplied by d theta by dt, which I'm gonna borrow it up from here. So final, finally, this comes out to be 4v squared divided by r secant cube theta. This is what the acceleration comes out to be. They wanted us to find the normal reaction at the time when this separation was root 2 r. So if um, a equals root 2 r, then this would be r by root 2 and this would be r. And from this right triangle, we can say theta equals 45 degrees. And clearly the normal reaction uh, on the sphere by the blocks will be in this direction, passing through the center. These angles are 45 degrees now. And there's also the weight of the sphere acting. So we can write the net downward force, which is mg minus the vertical forces are, so the vertical component of this n is n cos theta. So as there are two normals, it will be 2n cos 45. This would be equal to m into acceleration of the particle. So let's, so what will be the acceleration? Theta is 45 degrees, right? So it will be 4 v square divided by r. Secant 45 is root 2. So this would be 2 root 2. So acceleration is simply 8 root 2 v square by r. Now substituting all the given values, we'll get so I made a mistake here. So this was this was 2r actually. I forgot to take the 2 outside. So the d theta by dt would be v upon r cos theta. So there won't be this, this and this. So the acceleration, this would be 4. So this would be 4. Okay, and even this 2 will be gone now. So our normal reaction will finally come out to be 10 root 2 minus 8 newtons okay so option number two says that how much force must be applied to each of the two blocks so that they do not have any acceleration okay so i uh, i guess in this question uh, they're asking about asking at this particular instant when theta is 45 degrees so now as we have the value of so now if we look at the fbd of the block the normal reaction will be acting something like this at an angle of 45 degrees. So the external force that we must apply in the horizontal direction must be n cos 45, which would be 10 minus 4 root 2 newtons. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So if you, so if you guys want more of such videos, please do like and subscribe. And thanks for watching guys.